Hey, good day. It's Tourism Tim here again with another incredible episode of Tourism Marketing TV. And I am honored to be talking again to Sandy Duvetter, who is the, the princess of travel, the global ambassador of goodwill in the tourism industry, and a fellow Northern California, uh, nat uh, not native, but uh, relocated up here. We live here now. Good we morning. do, we do. In fact, thank you, Tim, for, for the invitation. It's wonderful to be on your show. I am a Southern California native. But I've been up here since the uh, the seventies when I worked for George Lucas, and then I went back down for twelve years, and I came back up, and I'm so happy to be back to Northern California. <laughs> Sounds like my story too. I ended up I was I went to high school in Danville, uh, and uh, I was we were practically neighbors in in uh, San Diego County, and I that was I got my first taste in Northern California. I decided uh, this is where I got to come back. So this is great. Good place to do business, too. Absolutely. So let me just do another quick uh, intro of you. If you did not catch the first uh, episode that I, and this first interview I did with Sandy, uh, it's really focused on uh, some really wonderful stuff on the on the, the global atmosphere of tourism, how we work together, uh, uh, how to create relationships uh, to help increase your bookings, how to deal with um, uh, challenges that might show up uh, and, and, and having good PR in place and uh, really what a wonderful industry this is. So that was wonderful. If you haven't seen that episode, I encourage you to go and check that out. Um, uh, let me do a another. If you didn't see the first one, uh, Sandy is the the founder of Travel Talk Media. She's got two outstanding uh, shows that she does, uh, Travel Talk Radio and Business Travel Radio. Um, I learned that you are the global ambassador for the International Women's Fair in, in uh, Africa. You've won countless awards. You've done tour, uh, marketing, uh, PR, and kind of media relationships for all kinds of tourism boards. You're at all the shows. Uh, you really have been a truly an icon in the tourism industry, and I'm honored to uh, be having you having the show today. Thank you. Well, thank you, Tim. I, I guess if you stick around long enough, that's what happens, huh? <laughs> Well, I, I uh, you're you've always been one of my my uh, uh, mentors, one of the people that I look up to, and so uh, this is this is particularly rewarding for me that that uh, I get to do this with you today. So well, thank I'm you. tickled myself. So thank you. Good deal. Well, let's let's help some uh, people who are either have a career in the travel and hospitality world or are thinking about it. You know, I know this, these days a lot of people have lost their jobs. Um, or perhaps you're in, a, you're in a job that's just not fulfilling. I think mm. that one of the things that, that really drives both Sandy and myself and most of the tourism professionals that we interact with is that this is, it's, this is a, a business of quality of life. That when we do our job well, we are enhancing quality of life, not only directly for our customers, but as you so perfectly put it in the last episode, is how tour operators are, are getting involved with their community and, 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 and introducing our guests to other cultures and giving that opportunity to do volunteer work, to actually make donations and to keep that connection going. And, and really it makes a huge difference uh, on all levels, not only for our guests, uh, but for the communities that we work with. So that, that, was, that was a really good point you made, Sandy. Well, thank you. Well, I think too, and moving on and in, in talking about careers and things that are going on and, and opportunities, it's interesting to know that, for example, one of the leaders in our country, Roger Dow, how he got started in the industry, he was a lifeguard at the Marriott. Hmm. So, you know, it's the entree is easy to get into this industry. It's now the vision and the determination to stay in it. So I think there's really a lot of ways that you can enter our beautiful uh, travel and tourism industry. Uh, but there, are, the one thing to remember, though, there are a lot of doors. So you can choose your entree. Good point. It is definitely an industry that allows uh, relatively easy access. There's a lot of people who have risen up the ranks uh, mm -hmm. to top-level positions who started as, as doormen. Uh, right. And uh, you know, in industry level positions, but I think besides whatever a doorway you come into or, or what sector you go into, it doesn't really matter. I I think the underlying thing is what is it we love about what we do, and so that was the question I wanted to ask you. What do you? What are some of the things you most love about being uh, involved with the travel and hospitality industry? Well, the list is long, but I will capsulize it, and I think it always has to do with the people. Um, I have many friends all over the world, and I have very, very close friends around the world, and I think that's really something that has taken some time, naturally, but I think that's one of the benefits that, that you will see will come to you as you become very entrenched in your in this industry, rather, whether it is a, a, a local um, um, uh, title that you might have 
or a, a national title or a global title. Uh, but it's really about the people. And I think that you'll find in our industry, more than most industries, you're going to find people who are drawn to it because of the opportunity to experience that other side, to take a look and celebrate that diversity. And I think that's really important is to um, understand in yourself that that's really what you want to do is, is there might not be a lot of money. And certainly there are, there are some good, significant jobs in this industry, but there, it's not the kind of industry where it's like the legal industry where you're, everybody gets paid a certain above the average. This is going to be kind of all across the board. So it's a decision-making process for you in the fact that, um, um, your door that you choose is your, the door that you choose. So you have to have some decision making and make good choices that will suit you best. So if you want a little extra money and you want to be in the industry, then you just have to choose that little different door. Uh, one thing that we touched on a little bit earlier is the tour guide industry. That is growing immensely. Um, I have I, I work very closely with Ted Bravos, the founder of the International Tour Management Institute. And what Ted is saying is that in the last 10 years, we've seen a real dip. In fact, it was scary for a while. But the last couple of years, we are seeing tour operators saying, we need to get our tour guides and we need to put them back in front. So we're getting a lot more um, interest. And for example, the, the International Tour Management Institute, what they do is they take two weeks and they will take and put you through this course that is very intense. But when you come out of it, you have a certificate. And to have a certificate out of the ITMI, ITMI is, is significant because it's well known around the world. But what it allows you to do then is to get into this pool of, of, of guides, managers, whatever that is, you might want to call it. it and we do have different titles for that same person. But it's basically that person that's in front of that that guest and is saying, we're going to go here. I want to take care of you here. We'll be safe here. Those kinds of things. So they are the actual tour guide as we know them. But this particular institute does a beautiful job in the fact that they will also uh, take care of their, their, uh, 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 their graduates and provide them with a lifelong commitment to make sure that they have jobs. So this is a great, great group up here that I'm connected with that I'm very proud of. But you're going to find other opportunities like that too. Uh, one book that I, I, I really like and I, I've had the author on and it's it's called Getting Paid to Cruise. <laughs> and this is actually uh, a, um, a graduate from the ITMI. Mm. And what we're finding is a lot of these graduates, uh, Carol Lee Miles is, is one of them, a lot of these graduates go on to do things in media, they write their own books, they become their own tour guide or tour operator. So these are very uh, great opportunities to open more doors. Definitely. Well, I, I'm glad you touched upon the that there are many doors and the compensation is across the board, but more than anything, it's the people we get to work with and the places that we get to do. And this get when you do when we do our job well, you know, for me when I think about it, it's the smile on pe people's faces. It's it's when they see or experience something for the first time, and and there, there's the that incredulous energy that they have, and then, and and or the incredible deep state of relaxation. To me, that is compensation uh, that I, I carry with me everywhere and is, is priceless. If you can change that ride home, you've done your job. I was sitting in a, in a I'm a vegetarian, but I, I, I was at a hamburger joint, I have to confess, but I wasn't eating a hamburger. But in any case, I was talking to some people beside me. They were very afraid to go to the Middle East. Well, by the time we were done having our little meal, they were convinced that they were going to look into Jordan, and we exchanged email addresses, and sure enough, they went to Jordan, and it was the, it was the husband that was really afraid. They came back and said it had changed their lives. They were so thankful that we had had that discussion, and they were, you know, had a completely different feeling about the Middle East because they'd gone. And I think that's really what you have to do sometimes is just step out of your comfort zone just a little tiny bit, and you're going to find that, wow, it's an amazing world out there. The... You mentioned the tour guides, which is a you know, frontline position, but there are literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds 
of direct and indirect roles to be involved with the travel industry. You could be, you, let's say you're a brilliant at social media. Uh, you could connect up with a destination or a tour operator who doesn't, is not very good at that, but would love to have someone educating the public is about, you know, for example, Jordan, a uh, great place to visit in the Middle East, about, you know, the, you know, the, what the reality is there and, and how wonderful it is. And, and then it is, a, you know, a, a, a safe place to go and, you know, and, that, and to, because a lot of the information out there is um, uh, not necessarily true. So you could, you could, that's, there's just so many ways that you can be involved with the industry. There are, there are, and, and I think you have to decide is, do you want to travel? And if you want to travel, then you have to look at those jobs that allow you to travel. Otherwise, you might be in front of a computer living vicariously through some people, but that might be a great way to do it, too. Yeah, absolutely. So besides, I love that, the, uh, I love to connect with the gentleman in uh, San Francisco at the Tour Operator Institute. And it's encouraging to see that there are a lot more students are coming in, that they're seeing demand. What are some of the other um, uh, outlooks that you're seeing for people of a tourism career moving forward, um, either regions or specialty sp uh, skills? Or what are some of the things that you think are going to be in demand moving forward? Well, language skills are always going to be in demand, and I think more and more. And we're going to see a huge influx of Chinese visitors. Mm -hmm. So our new Chinese guests are going to need to have people who speak their language. So uh, Chinese-speaking uh, individuals are going to be in great demand, especially in the United States. So there's that great opportunity, too. We're seeing more and more emerging countries. Bhutan. Bhutan wasn't even doing tourism 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. Not really. But now they are. They've got a, a, a council, not a ministry, but a council for tourism. So we're going to see a lot more places like Bhutan who are going to be opening their doors and say, Saying, you know, we need help. So there is the opportunity for people who might be in a career right now that can shift their energies and bring more of their skill sets to people that are not maybe in the know of what they can do to maybe be more profitable. And certainly you and I talked about volunteerism uh, or volunteerism, whatever you might want to call it, in our first segment that we did earlier. That's a great, great opportunity. And what happens is a lot of people will go through that whole that whole experience and come back. And I've seen it so many times that they'll start their own organization mm. and, and they'll start supporting that school that they worked at or start supporting that woman's group that they were in. So um, there's all kinds of opportunities. And one lady I know that she was in the pharmaceutical industry, uh, got turned on about um, Africa, came home and started taking ladies to South Africa. So, you know, there's you can be creative, think outside the box, um, maybe tap on the doors of you or myself and, you know, get us to, you know, give a couple, you know, a little bit of advice. Certainly my door is always open that way and uh, see what happens. Neat, neat. Well, it, it's, it's, it's fun how you can leverage your life with professional skills and uh, get that spark of tourism and take it into other areas. And you made a really good point just a moment ago is that some of these things uh, may be seasonal. They could be a part-time. Uh, opportunity. It doesn't have to, to be a permanent thing. Uh, I, I love the suggestion on the foreign language. Uh, if, you, if you spoke Mandarin and you were in the California and you know, might, that you could work with a tour operator who has groups coming over once a month and you know you say work for three or four days and, and you have this great experience. You get to practice your language. Absolutely. And I can guarantee you'll be working a lot more than that if you do have manager. <laughs> It's a great demand. I'm telling you, it's a great opportunity right now. It's well, it's not on it's not on my resume, and I don't. I'm pretty good. At, I'm pretty good at Spanish, but uh, Mandarin, I it would be nice. Not not today though. <laughs> not not today. Well, you've you've mentioned some great resources with the tour operators um, uh, institute, getting that skill, uh, foreign language, leveraging your existing. Um, skill set. Um, any other resources that are out there, someone who's either looking to get in the field or or maybe is in there and they want to enhance their skills uh, mm -hmm. in the tourism profession? Well, if you if you come to different periodicals, publications, and one of my favorites is eTurbo News, mm -hmm. etn.travel. If you go there, you're going to find a, a robust uh, a publication that every day is sent out to 230,000 individuals in the industry. And you're going to see stories in there that touch every aspect of life. And the way we look at it, travel is really also about healthy lifestyle. So we bring in a lot of health 
also not only in our programming, but ETN, E-Turbo News, they also do too. So if you go in and you gravitate towards a publication like that, start reading it. You're going to start seeing now, again, what's happening outside. So you'll see networking opportunities, you'll see exhibits, you'll see events. And I would always suggest to go in and see some of these people, meet some of these people. When I was in Accra in April, and I act as the, the uh, international global ambassador for, for this particular event, I had ladies who snuck backstage to find me. And I, I have to tell you, I loved it. I loved it that they did that. And you know what? We're working together now. So you have to have a little hoop spa, hoop spa I should say. You've got to have a, a little nerve. You've got to think outside the box. You've got to feel good about yourself. And I think that's all about being healthy individual. And and really, that's what this, this industry needs is, is that triangle, somebody who's in harmony, not only spiritually, but mentally and physically. I mean, physically, you have to be healthy to travel. And we've seen that so many times. And I've often said, don't wait till you're too old to travel because it does take a hearty individual to travel. So, and there's all kinds of ways you can help people who have uh, uh, disabilities. I mean, that's a huge trend right now, mm. too, also, Tim, is uh, accessible travel. SATH, S-A-T-H dot org. If you're interested in that aspect of it, there's a lot of people who are or have disabilities who have found a niche there who are actually helping travelers of their, uh, with the same concerns, do a better job. And also the, the important thing to learn about or to know about accessible travel is if you can take grandma with you, that means you can take the 15 of you with. So that means it's a huge opportunity for that property or that operator to have an accessible uh, travel portion for people who might need a little bit of help because that will bring on everybody else. Well, that, that that is a good one. It, it's, uh, it's a phrase I coined called uh, TST, and that's the, we, we're part of that group. That's tomorrow's seniors today, and uh, so it's important for us to um, be aware of what our our needs would be in the future. And uh, with the baby boomers getting older, uh, my dad had had a couple strokes and became uh, disabled and was in a wheelchair, and so. Uh, I, I became very sensitive to the needs of my dad, and he loved to travel. He was an adventure guy. He was the original adventure guy. I think that's where I got it. And uh, uh, so I really, I, that's such a good point. It says that you can, how you can leverage your existing life skills, yes. look into the future, look at what's happening in the marketplace, and bring those to, to bear. Uh, the other thing that you said that I think is, is brilliant, um, and I agree with wholeheartedly, is, is that um, be be a constant student. Constantly be looking at the resources uh, that are out there, constantly learning, finding out the trends, connecting with people. Uh, you and I are both teachers, but I, you're probably like me. You're more of a, a student than a teacher. I am mm -hmm. constantly interested in what's going on because it's always changing and it's, 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 it's never boring. So um, I am, I'm thrilled to, to spend this time with you, Sandy. I really appreciate your wisdom and the, the, uh, the nuggets that you've asked, uh, added for anybody who uh, has a career or would like to get a career in the travel and hospitality industry. It, the industry continues to boom. It continues to grow. And, and really, the, I think you've reaffirmed to me that the opportunities just continue to grow and grow. Absolutely. And they change and they grow. So like you, like you say, always be that student so you continue to have your finger on the pulse. Outstanding. Sandy, a real pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm honored and touched, and I look forward to more travel adventures with you in the future. I do too, Tim. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Take care. Bye-bye.